Hi. Now what we've got here is a typical problem on the equilibrium of a rigid body. And it's a question that you might like to uh, try. So uh, have a go, just pause the video, come back when ready and I'll run through the work solution for you. Okay, welcome back if you had a go. So let's just read the question back. What we've got here is a non-uniform rod then AB which has a length of 3 meters and a mass of 4.5 kilograms. The rod rests in equilibrium in a horizontal position on two supports, one at P and one at Q, where AP is 0.8 meters and QB is 0.6 meters, as shown in this diagram. And the center of mass of the rod is at G. Given that the magnitude of the reaction at the support at P on the rod is twice the magnitude of the reaction at the support at Q on the rod, what we've got to do is find in part A the magnitude of the reaction of the support at Q on the rod and then go on to find the distance A to G. Now what we need to do is add forces to this diagram. And we're told that it's a non-uniform rod, so that means that the weight of the rod will not act in the middle, but we're told that it acts at a point G. And the mass of the rod is 4.5 kilograms. So if we put the weight in acting at G, then it's going to act downwards and its weight is going to be Mg. So that would be 4.5 G, okay, G Newtons. Now I'm going to take G later on in the problem as 9.8, okay? Now, what else we got? We got the reactions at P and Q, and we're told that the reaction at P is twice the reaction at Q. And the reaction at Q will act upwards. Let's call this R, be R Newtons. So therefore, the reaction at P will be twice that, we're told. So that's going to be 2R Newtons. Now these are all the forces, the only forces then acting on the rod, keeping it in equilibrium. So therefore, what we can do to find out what R is, is resolve, resolve vertically. So for part A, what we're going to do is resolve vertically. It doesn't matter whether you go up or down as your positive sense. I'm going to take upwards as positive. And what we would have is that we've got all of 2R plus another R, so just write that as 2R plus R, minus all of the weight acting downwards. Notice it's minus because it's in the opposite sense to the positive direction here. So it's minus 4.5 G must equal zero because that resultant force here provides no acceleration, it's in equilibrium, so there's no resultant force. So what we've got is 2R plus R is 3R, so therefore 3R, and if we add 4.5G to both sides, we end up with 3R equals 4.5G. And to get R, all we need to do is divide both sides by 3, and that will give us 1.5G. And if we take G, as I said earlier, as 9.8, if you do 1.5 times 9.8, R will turn out to be 14.7 Newtons. Okay, so there's your reaction at Q. Now in part B, okay, let's just come down here. In part B, what we've got to do then is find the distance A to G. Now, to find distance, we use moments. Remember, the moment of a force about a particular point is the force times the perpendicular distance back to the point that you're taking moments about. So, if we're doing a question like this, you can take moments about any point you like, okay? You should end up with exactly the same answer for AG at the end of the day. And it's good to experiment with problems like this. Now, obviously I can't do all the possibilities there are, but I'm going to take moments about P. 
I'm taking moments about P because, well, it involves less forces in the answer that I write down here. A good place also to take moments is about A. And I'm going to leave it to you to experiment with this um, once I've taken moments about P. And as I say, you should get the same answer. But I'm going to take moments about P. Let's just do that. Moments about P. Now when you take moments, you need a positive sense. And I'm going to take the positive sense in a clockwise sense. Okay, that's positive. Again, that's totally up to you which way around you do it. And again, experiment with this. Now when you take moments about a particular point, what I often suggest to people who have difficulty with this is just to think of a ruler. Just place a ruler, take a ruler, put it on the desk, and then we'll take the point P. Let's say that's the point P. We've got A at this end, B at this end. This is the point P. And at the point P, just put your finger on that point there. Okay, so we'll just draw a sketch of a hand. Okay, there, I hope you can get that. So you put your finger on that point there. And when it comes to looking at the forces, if you've got your finger at P, this is not going to, this force here, 2R Newtons, is not going to want to turn this ruler at all about this point. But if you press or push, in the direction of the 4.5 G Newton force that's pushing in that direction just say at this point here which we're assuming is G the ruler will want to turn in a clockwise sense about P in the positive sense so when it comes to taking this moment it's going to be the force 4.5 G let's just put it down here so you've got 4.5 G that's that force multiplied by the distance from this force acting at G back to P. So that's going to be the distance PG. So let's just put that in brackets, PG. 4.5G multiplied by the distance PG. Now when it comes to the force at Q, that's a force acting in that direction, pushing that way. So push with your finger and you'll find that the ruler will want to turn around in that direction in an anti-clockwise sense, which is in the negative sense to what you've got here. So what we've got is minus then for the moment of the force acting at Q. So it'll be the force, which is R Newtons. R we know is 14.7, so it's 14.7 multiplied by the distance Q back to P. And the distance from Q to P, or PQ, is going to be the difference between the sum of 0.8 and 0.6, which is 1.4 meters, taken that away from the three meters, and that will give us this gap here, PQ. So three meters take away 1.4 meters leaves us with 1.6 meters. So it's going to be the force 14.7 multiplied by 1.6. Now this is the total moment acting about P, but the rod is in equilibrium, so the total moment must be zero. There must be no overall turning effect. So all we need to do is rearrange this for PG. So if you work out 14.7 times 1.6, you get 23.52. And so if I add that to both sides, I'm going to get 4.5G times PG equals 23.52. So we'll just put that down. And actually, if you work out 4.5 times G, 9.8, you get 44.1. So we'll put that in, 44.1 multiplied by PG, 14.7 times 1.6 is 23.52. Add it to both sides and you get 23.52 there. So to get PG, just divide both sides then by 44.1. And so 23.52 divided by 44.1 comes to 0.53 recurring. So I'll just put a little dot over that 3 there. Now when it comes to working out AG then, all you've got to do, we just put therefore AG equals, is to add 0.8, okay, the distance AP, to PG, 
which we've seen is the plus 0.53 recurring. And if you do that, you end up with exactly 1.3 recurring, or if you like, four thirds, four thirds of a meter. Now I did say that you could take moments about any point along here, and I would definitely encourage you to experiment with this if you're unsure about taking moments, okay? It's the only way you're gonna build confidence. Take moments about A, that's a good place to take moments as well. I'll just verbally tell you what's going to happen, okay? If you take moments about A and say take clockwise as positive, then what you're going to have is this force acting at G is gonna to want to turn the ruler in a clockwise sense, so you'll have 4.5G times AG, which is what we're trying to find out. Then there'll be minus, if we take this moment from Q, minus R times AQ. Now AQ is going to be obviously the distance three meters minus 0.6 meters, total of 2.4 meters. So it will be R times 2.4. And then it'll be minus for the force acting through P. Minus 2R multiplied by the distance AP, multiplied by 0.8. So I know I've said that verbally and not written it down on purpose, just so that you could write that down, give it a try, check out that you do end up with the distance AG as being four thirds of a meter and try in other places as well, all right? But I would think that you'd find taking moments either about P or either about A as generally the best methods for this particular problem.